Hello everyone, this is Daniel Chris from Prisoner Facts. This is Prisoner Facts special episode number 170. We're going to be talking about a theropod dinosaur today, and that theropod dinosaur is Neovenator. And this is an artist rendition of a Neovenator. I think this is fantastic. Some information about Neovenator. Neovenator means new hunter, length 24 and a half feet or 7.4 meters, height six and a half feet or approximately two meters, weight 2,000 to 4,000 pounds, lived 130 to 125 million years ago in the early Cretaceous period and found in the United Kingdom and described by Hunt, Martle, and Barker in 1996. Now that does not mean that the fossils were discovered in 1996 and then were described, they were discovered in the 1970s and they kept finding more and more fossils to the point where they can describe the new species of dinosaur via a paper. And so 1986 is when the paper came out. So here are some pictures of in, in this slide right here. And so here is the map of the United Kingdom and, uh, and where the fossils of Neovenator are found in this tiny island on the bottom of this map. And that is uh, the Isle of Wight. And the Isle of Wight is a very tiny island. It's got some pretty cool fossils there. And uh, yeah, if you want to read about what kind of fossils were found in uh, Isle of Wight, please do so. And uh, in this picture right here in the upper right corner, this is a size chart. And so the gray silhouette is the uh, is the type specimen. So this is like the whole type specimen. And so another types of fossils that were discovered there. So this is what the size actually is right now. But when you consider this black silhouette, this black silhouette is only based on what could possibly be neovenators of like maximum size, if there was a maximum size of uh, neovenator. But yeah, sometimes uh, paleontologists like to uh, have some uh, estimates of like the possibilities of how big neovenator could get. And on the bottom right corner here is a skeletal illustration of Neovenator right here, based based by Scott Hartman. He does really, really great work. I highly recommend you check out his stuff. More information about Neovenator. Neovenator belongs to the family group of theropods called the Neovenatoridae, and they're closely related to the Carcharodontosauridae and the Allosauridae. So they're closely related to the Carcharodontosaurs and the Allosaurs. So they're kind of in that in that type of lineage. And uh, some descriptions of Neovenator, it's got a uh, narrow skull, a very narrow skull, uh, designed for uh, slicing and dicing, like their blade-like teeth. They actually have the blade-like blade, blade -like teeth for slicing and dicing. They got three-fingered claws in each hand, and they got some pretty good claws on their hands. Uh, speed is approximate right here on this one, so this is an estimate right here. They, so between 20 and 25 miles per hour. And of course, Neovenator is a carnivore and it eats meat. The environment in which Neovenator lived in, it lived in warm, humid climates. And a, a lot of plants around were ferns, cycads, trees, and some of the first flowers. And there was no grass uh, during the time of the dinosaurs. And some waterways that were around Neovenator, some rivers, lakes, and ponds. Uh, other types of animals that were around Neovenator, like insects, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, some of the first birds, uh, pterosaurs were very common at that time, and of course, other types of dinosaurs as well. Now let's talk about prey and competition. So the prey that Neovenator would actually be going after is a dinosaur called Hips Hypsilophodon. So it's a small dinosaur, uh, an Ornithischian, so a bird hip dinosaur, has great speed. And uh, they would probably be in, in uh, huge flocks. And uh, yeah, and uh, Neovenator would actually, the best way to get one of those is to ambush, ambush one of those things. So that's probably the best bet. And it could go after Iguanodon, mainly the juveniles. So it could go after juvenile Iguanodon. It could scavenge off of Iguanodon if it had to as well. So I forgot to put carrion in, in there as well. And competition, what I mean by a competition is that there was another predator uh, that was around during the time of Neovenator, and that was the famous Spinosaur, Baryonyx. So Baryonyx lived in the same time as Neovenator. But both of these predators are going to have different niches. Uh, so Baryonyx would live near waterways, 
and so it would actually be and so baryonyx would be eating like fish and some other and some scavenging off of some dinosaurs that probably were near the rivers and lakes and neovenator would be going after uh the like iguanodon hypsilophodon carrion that was in inland so that so neovenator is a land-based part of there so it could go after those types of dinosaurs the extinction of neovenator is mostly due to climate change one of those things that was happening was the sea levels were beginning to were rising and so a uh, year up around 125 million years ago was starting to become scattered islands and so that's what was going on there and so when the, you know, the lowlands start getting flooded that's where like the prey species disappear and all that sorts of stuff the and the plants that the plant eaters do uh eat ultimately disappear as well and so that's why neovenator went extinct, could not adapt to the new to those types of changes. And here's a map of uh, what 125 million years ago possibly looked like. So this uh, island that is in between this larger island and uh, Western Europe and all the way and in between and uh, North America is this island uh, kind of right, like right there. You see this uh, little island uh, that is that was pretty much where neovenator was actually living in. And so yeah, that's uh, little island. And so the next episode is on May 13th, 2021. It'll be a Q&A episode. So if you got any questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Let's go to my Facebook page, Chris or Facts Dino Chris. Like the page, you actually post your questions in the comment section. Please put them in the comment section. Comment section. Please don't put them on Messenger. Messenger is only for private conversations. And uh, yeah, make sure you that you uh, like the like the page and put, put your questions in the comments. And uh, for YouTubers out there, feel free to like the videos and also share them as well. Subscribe to the channel and also stomp onto the bell so that way you can get uh, weekly notifications of every single video that comes out. And uh, be sure to put your questions in the comment section too because I do read them all and your questions do mean a lot and uh, you can get a shout out in, on a Q&A video and, and, you got, and I know you guys do like that as well. And remember, keep your questions short to the point. You can also follow me on Instagram at dino.chris.pf. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at C-S-G-R-A-L-L. -L. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of the people around you. And also, for your younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you could have for a good education. It's very, very important to have a good education. It's with a good education. You get a good job in the future. And also, in this kind of time, please wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands. And also, make sure you get vaccinated because that is very important to reduce the spread of the virus. And also, that way, we can get to herd immunity and also we can get closer to normal. And that's what we all we all. And also feel free to check out the loss of fossils and I'll put a link in the description down below so that way you can uh, hit the link and you can check out Colossal fossils and we're in a, in a fundraising mode still and uh, feel free to go to the donate tab and uh, donate as much as you want uh, to Colossal fossils because that helps get us some pretty cool exhibits uh, for our permanent place once we do get a permanent place and also for our traveling because we do travel as well and so that's and that's going to be very cool once we do uh have a permanent place and we got some pretty cool stuff pretty cool events coming and that is really really nice to, to hear about that that's it for now and i'll see you guys next time